Bali, the island of gods, a place that can be described as a traveler's paradise. Because of its many waterfalls, beautiful nature, temples and unique culture, Bali has been a very attractive tourist destination for many years. Having been to Bali for six times in total, I found it was about the time to share my travel tips if you're planning your next trip to Ubud. Selamat siang! Welcome back to my channel, Geomographic. I'm sure most of you have heard about Bali. It's a very popular tourist destination here in Southeast Asia. There are plenty of amazing places that you can visit over there, which is the reason why Bali attracts millions of tourists every year but sadly, many of them are a little bit overrun. However, there are still ways how to avoid the crowds and how you can enjoy Bali to the fullest. In this video, I will mostly talk about the places that you can visit around Ubud, surprisingly with very little tourists. One of the first places that you should visit are the Jatilui rice terraces. This place is about 75 to 90 minutes from Ubud and it's located at the bottom of Mount Batukaru. The Jatilui rice terraces stretch over nearly 3 kilometers, which makes it to a very large area to explore. Cars are not allowed to enter, however, you can either go by bike, by bicycle or by walk. I think because of that it is a rather less visited place, which in my opinion makes it perfect to enjoy the idol. Because the rice fields are so large, I suggest to plan it at least two hours. Myself, I was just walking around and I quickly realized that this area is just too large to explore by walk. Definitely taking a bicycle would have been of great advantage. It's definitely a good idea to once in a while leave the main track to walk around inside the rice fields. When doing that, you will realize that you actually have this place pretty much all for yourself. On the way back, I suggest you make a quick stop here for a break. They serve relatively cheap and pretty good coconuts. After that, I suggest you head back to the entrance and go for lunch. Around there, you'll find this buffet restaurant. Although I think this place is pretty commercialized, it was actually one of the buffet restaurants that I really liked. Before you're heading elsewhere, I suggest you first pay a visit to my favorite secret waterfall, the Air Terjun Yeho. By car, it is just around 5 minutes from the restaurant. The moment you arrive there, you immediately will realize that this place is still very unknown. When you're walking down, you'll pass this many fountains. I think it should be an aqueduct and it looked actually really cool. So far, you're not obliged to pay any entrance fee. However, the locals, they expect you to make a small donation. So I suggest you pay about 10 to 20,000 Indonesian rupiah per person. That's about one US dollar. Once you reach the bottom, you have to walk up the creek for about three to five minutes. After that, you reach this lonely waterfall, a tranquil spot of its kind, which you rarely find anywhere else in Bali. Compared to many other waterfalls on the island, you can actually even swim in the creek. Honestly, I do have to say, I feel a little bit proud to have discovered this place. I really didn't expect it to be that great, but yeah, yes, it still remains rather non-touristy, but who knows, that actually may change in the next years. On the way back, I tried the jungle swing. It was really cool and what's the best of the best is it's actually free. To my knowledge, this even could be the only free jungle swing on the entire island. Definitely you should try it, but remember, this is all at your own risk, so make sure you're being careful. Of course, no visit to Bali is complete if you haven't visited at least one Hindu temple. Around Ubud, there are many temples that you can find, but one of the most important that you have to visit is the Pura Tirta Empul. The temple is one of the holiest sites on the entire island that attracts many pilgrims. It's very ancient, dating back to the 10th century. Over the years it was expanded and developed into today's form. The name Tirta Ampul comes from the Balinese language which means Holy Spring. Thus it is no surprise why many people are coming here for a purifying ritual bath. 
temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu, one of the three main gods in Hinduism. Unlike in India, it is not very common to see many god statues, but instead the Balinese they are putting up umbrellas in four different colors. Red stands for Brahma the creator, black Vishnu the protector, and Shiva the destroyer is being represented by white and yellow. Together, these three gods form the Hindu trinity. Around Ubud, this temple is probably the most visited one and that's why I suggest you to come here as early as possible. I think if you reach here by 8 or 9 in the morning, it's still going to be fine, but after 10 you will see already a huge influx of tourists. Alternatively, you can also go there at 4.30 in the afternoon. Most of the tourists will then be at the Tegalalang rice terraces. On the way out, you'll pass a market where you can buy a lot of Balinese souvenirs. Make sure you bargain well. I suggest to target about 30 to 60% of the original price. However, that highly depends on the seller you're dealing with. Just nearby is another very important temple that you can visit, the Pura Gunung Kawi. This place is best to combine with the Tirta Ampul temple because it is very nearby. Despite being one of the main temples in Bali, surprisingly this one is actually very little visited. In order to reach the temple, you have to climb these stairs down with more than 200 steps. However, before you reach the bottom, I suggest you first turn to your right to go to the Pura Bukit Gundu. It takes about 5 to 8 minutes to reach the temple. It's definitely worth it, because most likely you will be all alone. When you arrive here, you will see these carved structures, which I believe are tombs. Honestly, I do have to say, I somehow felt like being in a Tomb Raider movie. It was a really interesting environment. If you're lucky, you may even meet some locals who come here for prayers. What you need to know about the Balinese people, they are very friendly and they really like to take photos with tourists. Just like my new friends here. On the way back, you should check on your left, there is a waterfall where you can take pictures. As I mentioned, it is very uncommon to find waterfalls in Bali with little tourists, but this is another one where most likely will be all alone. After checking out the waterfall, it is time to head to the main temple, to the Pura Gunung Kawi. Just like the Pura Tirta Ampul, the Gunung Kawi temple is very ancient, dating back to the 11th century. Very impressive here are these nine chandis in English shrines, which are carved into the rocks. It is believed that these shrines are dedicated to King Udayana, his queen and his sons. When you go to the temple, you will see there is a section where you have to get off your shoes. What you get to see over there could be the actual grave of King Udayana and his family members. Also on the other side of the creek are four more shrines which are dedicated to the king's concubines. Before you go, there's one more place I recommend you to see and that is the nearby waterfall. On the side of the five chandis, just follow this path that leads into the rice fields. It's only a three to five minutes walk to reach the waterfall. It's totally free to visit, even though there are some people who may ask for a donation, you actually don't have to pay anything. As you can see, again, there is nobody here and this is what my channel Gemographic is about. I'm mostly sharing the places with little people and if you like that, then please hit the subscribe button now. I very much appreciate that. After enjoying the waterfall, I suggest you go back, walk up the stairs, but before going out, take another quick break at the lookout. Although it's very popular, I would say it's very sad if you're not spending a visit to the Tegalalang rice terraces. There are many beautiful rice terraces all over Bali, but what makes them different is that they're built into a valley. With the Tegalalang rice terraces being one of the most visited sites in Bali, there are two important things that you have to know. First of all, there are two locations where people go. One of them is this incredibly touristy place. It is very nicely managed. There are a lot of attractions like jungle swings, a cave and many other things, but at times it can be very crowded. The other location is just three minutes further up. 
In my opinion, it is the most beautiful sight at Tagalalang, just like many other people think. The other thing which I'd like to tell you, this place usually gets the most crowded after 4 p.m. in the afternoon. That is because during that time the mood is usually the best and also because many people are doing a last stop here before going back to the hotel. Now let me share you my three ways of how to escape the crowds. First, that is very easy, you can even do that if you're coming there during peak hours. Just go to the other side of the valley, over there you will already have much less people. What's also really cool on that side, you have some jungle swings with a fantastic view and the best of the best, you actually don't have to queue up because there are no people and it's much cheaper. Yeah, this jungle swing is actually amazing because you have a really fantastic view and yeah, you can actually swing for quite a long time. I was swinging for five minutes, which I think is definitely enough. Yeah, prima casima. Yeah, sama, yeah. Sama. Second, just come here during the early morning between 8 and 10. I promise you, during that time, you will have the Tegalalang rice dresses pretty much all for yourself. It's now 9 in the morning and I do have to say it's really beautiful to enjoy this place with almost no people. And third, you may not have heard about this place, but in this side valley you will have absolutely no tourists. What you see behind me are the Santana rice terraces. So I'm here in a side valley of the Tegalalang rice terraces. And what's really amazing, there's absolutely nobody here. I'm sure many of you watching this video may know Bali from Instagram, seeing all these pretty pictures of these amazing landscapes, temples and waterfalls. But besides that, Bali has actually a very rich and unique culture. I would even go that far to claim that Bali is one of the places with the richest culture in the entire region of Southeast Asia. That is because they have this mixture between Hinduism, Animism and Buddhism, something that is very unique in the entire region. With staying in Ubud you're exactly in the right place because it is the center of the Balinese culture. There are various cultural performances that are very much worth to see, the best ones being Barong dance, Legong dance, and Kecha dance. The best places to enjoy the show are at Ubud Palace, Ubud Water Palace and Pura Batukaru Ubud. Show tickets can be purchased at Ubud Palace. With Ubud Palace being the most popular spot to watch the shows, in order to get a good seat, make sure you're not reaching there any later than 7 pm. One of the most iconic performances of Bali is the Ketcha dance. Usually people would go to Uluwatu to see that, but there usually the place is very crowded. So my secret tip, the best location to watch it is at the Pura Batukaru. It's just about 8 minutes by walk from Ubud Palace. Over there they're holding female Ketchak dance performances on every Tuesday night at 7.30 pm. And surprisingly there are not too many people so you can get a good seat. As you may know, Bali is a haven for foodies. Especially in Ubud you can find a lot of amazing restaurants. If you want to go to an affordable and very authentic Balinese restaurant, then you should go to the Murnis Warung. I'm presenting you my favorite restaurant in Ubud, which is only 5 minutes from the center. It is located next to this old bridge, from where you can have a brilliant view down to the canyon. What in particular is very nice about this restaurant, for once you're not facing the street, instead the forest, thus you can dine in a very serene environment. The prices here are pretty decent, one meal costing you about 12 to 25 US dollars and the food is very delicious. I am betetu, a typical Balinese dish and pork satay are my personal favorites. After enjoying a great lunch or dinner at the Murnisarung, I suggest you go to the nearby Gunung Leba temple. This is one of my favorite Balinese temples. I think it's a very beautiful one. 
and the best of the best, it's very little visited. During daytime, the temple is usually open to visitors. There are three levels, the first two can be accessed by anyone, whereas the third one is reserved for prayers. Now, I was lucky enough to make friends with one of the locals, so I could accompany him for prayers. It was a very unique experience, I do have to say I quite enjoyed it, and the Balinese religion is very beautiful. Thank you very much Bangli for taking me there, it was a really nice experience. The best times to visit this temple is on full moon nights as it's going to be very festive. During these nights you can see a lot of cultural performances such as Wayang Kulit or Gamelan and the people are also going to hold a ritual. <laughs> Very important, keep in mind that the dates for Full Moon Festival may differ from temple to temple, so it's best if you're asking your tour guide or personal driver. As I just mentioned, many of the most famous things are really overrun in Bali, but the most famous thing may not always be the best thing. This is really a rule of thumb you have to be aware of when traveling in Bali. You remember the Alter Jun Yeho, it's really nice, no tourists, nobody knows about it. Jatilui rice terraces versus Tegalalang rice terraces. Nobody knows about the Jatilui rice terraces, yet they are very beautiful. The famous jungle swing versus the one at the Tegalalang rice terraces. Nobody knows about them. They are much cheaper, much better and you don't have to queue up for it. So this is really something you have to keep in mind when you're traveling around Bali. We've reached the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed watching it and moreover I hope you will have a great vacation in Bali. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then please hit that button now. I very much appreciate that. And also, if you want to see more of my photography, you can actually follow me on Instagram on that link. So that's it from my side. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. We're going to see each other very soon.